I believe, the most cutting edge and up to date research. And, uh, you know, we're, we're not just talking about all this old stuff. We're talking about there's nothing new under the sun. If you don't think genetic engineering is going to affect you, think again. If you don't think robotic sex bots are going to affect you or your children's future, think again. That doesn't mean you're going to utilize uh, their uh, uh, machine intelligence or other parts of the robot, but the point is, is that people don't get it, Doug. Everything that God made is being attacked, and it's being, if you will, perverted. The Old Testament word is corrupt, and we have corrupted our ways. So I'm hoping people understand this. So when we're talking, look, we get pot shots taken us at all the time, and I get emails, and I'm sure you did too, L.A. What do you think about what so-and-so is saying? Well, he can speak Hebrew. Big deal. Uh, so could, uh, uh, you know, what, Belshazzar, and, uh, Belshazzar, Belshazzar on the wall, and uh, he couldn't uh, read until it was interpreted by Daniel that his kingdom is about to be lost. I believe God has written the equivalent by the hand of God in the skies. Go look at my website today, and a picture a person submitted is uh, literally, it looks like war coming in the clouds, a guy with an M16 rifle. It looks like in a tank in the background. Somebody says, oh, you're just seeing what you want to see. I said, it's interesting. At least it's coming from the west to the east. And that if that matches Henry Groover's vision. So getting back on track, the whole attempt to, to divorce humanity from the biblical truth, the whole attempt to control the narrative is to basically bring in not the Hegelian dialectic, but I would call it this, the Luciferian ultimate plan, you know? It is designed to bring us to that point where everything we used to know was true is now questioned. So they, they, keeping a person in a perpetual state of flux, that's what the, their side wants. I believe what God's going to give to all those who are attending and, and uh, you know, we'll see the DVDs, we've ordered the DVDs, is a sense of understanding that we are now in the time of the end that Daniel spoke of, that knowledge would run to and fro, but it's being unsealed. And it's interesting, as the knowledge becomes unsealed in the book of Daniel, in the book of Revelation, it's Jesus who is worthy to break open the seals. Go ahead, L.A. Yeah, and that's, that's something that we need to understand, that we're living in a period of time. You know, I used to say like 15 years ago I had hope. Um, I believed that, oh, things could turn around, and I know things are – a little tenuous, a little tumultuous. You know, you look around the globe, and, I mean, it's you can't fix it anymore. I mean, maybe 20 years ago you could kind of fix it, but it's gotten to the point where you just can't fix it. It's just crazy. And, and I mean, there was a there was a story today on, on a lot of the media. Um, a, a bunch of crazy thugs went in and, and just beat the daylights out of this guy on a train um, because he asked the kids to stop smoking pot. Lawlessness. I've never seen such lawlessness, and it's rampant. It's everywhere. It's all throughout America. It's all throughout Europe. Look at the drug cartels in Mexico. I mean, are you kidding me? I blogged about that this morning. I mean, there's a, there's a spiritual dynamic to everything that we're seeing, and it's not going away. And you're right, Steve, when you talk about the powers that be, they are hurting this planet, and they're not, you know, the, the leaders that we see, fine. What's behind them? That dark Luciferian agenda which has been in play, the mystery of iniquity, has been in play literally for, for millennia and continues to work and is working overtime now. And it hinges, the springboard to it is the Darwinian paradigm, the idea that, you know, there is no ultimate God, there is no right or wrong or, or moral absolutes. Do what you feel, which, is, by the way, is do what you want to do. It's the first tenet of the Satanic Bible. Thank you very much. So everything is out the window when, when we go back and we look at the Darwinist, and the Darwinist is this, the Darwinism is a springboard to the ancient alien show, which says that, you know, we were visited by ancient astronauts, and they seeded us here. They genetically manipulated early man. They started the world's civilizations. They started the world's first religions. And now, at this critical juncture, and make no mistake about it, I'm not a prophet. The late David Flynn talked about this. There's going to be a nuclear device unfortunately, that will be detonated somewhere on this planet. And when that happens, that will create the greatest amount of fear that human, humanity has ever collectively experienced. <clears throat> and when that happens, that's when they show up. And all bets are off. And that's, 
you know, it'll become this global, the Bible tells us it'll be a global one world religion and a one world global government. Can't buy, sell, or trade without the mark. And that's where everything is headed. It's like on steroids the way it's heading right now. And I, I don't see any let up to anything. I mean, you got the nutcase in Korea, Kim Jong un doing his stuff. You got a crazy imam in California, you know, who's saying, death to the Jews. We got to annihilate the Jews. My state, California, right? Isn't that great? So then he apologizes. Do we really think that that, that apology is, is worth the, the air it took to actually voice the words? Of course not. Uh, that guy is allowed to lie to the infidel. Guess what? We're the infidel. So he's lying. His, his core value, what he believes, is that all Israel should be wiped off the map. Death to the Jews. And that's why he finally said it. And it happens every Friday, Friday at the, um, in, in Iraq or Iran, rather, they stand up and go, death to America, death to Israel. And under the Obama administration, you know, basically Obama kowtowed them. Trump is doing something different. Can you fix it? No, because the deep state is in charge. And the deep state and the shadow government has been in charge since World War II. Eisenhower warned us about it. it it's there in the JFK thing. And I talked about this, I think, last night on some show I was on. But it's true. JFK, in my opinion, the last president that we really had, other than Trump. And Trump was never supposed to be there. It was Hillary all the way. She's a globalist. And that's that's why all this nonsense is going on with Trump. They want to either impeach him, uh, have Congress do nothing. So during the midterms, he'll lose Congress. I mean, it's all orchestrated. They are going against him. The problem is, is that there are people, millions of us, who are looking at this Congress rating, approval rating is down like 10%, one of the lowest all times. Gee, I wonder why because they're all a bunch of weasels. That's why we need term limits, but I digress. The deep state controls everything. Think about this. Before World War II, the CIA was OSS. There was no Langley. There was no billions of dollars spent on CIA operations every year. Didn't exist. Didn't exist. Homeland Security didn't exist. NSA did not exist. The Pentagon wasn't built, wasn't there. All this happens after World War II. That is the deep state. Why? Because no matter who we vote in the office, the deep state remains. They are bastions of power. And nothing changes just because someone new sits in the White House. That's why nothing is getting done. There's a deep, dark agenda. The fact that Paul Bagley was basically threatened three times by a guy from one of the alphabet agencies and told exactly what was happening, told the people that were on the watch list, Steve, you and I are on the watch list, as well as the Hagmans, by the way. Why? Because we're talking truth. Why? Because we always always go back, always default back to the biblical prophetic narrative. Why? Because we love Jesus. And that doesn't wash with the globalist agenda. That doesn't wash, and that's why the pushback. One more thing, and I'll end with, with, with a little bit of a rant, but when I was when Obama was president, we were being audited for 2013, 14, and 15. 14 and 15, we knew it was done by the book. We switched accountants after 13 because we felt, uh-oh, because that's when we got audited. And we said, well, the, the accountant screwed up. That's another story. So we go. I get that. But with 13, 14, and 15, they're saying we owed $150,000, which, of course, we didn't know. And then this, this lady from the IRS calls up and she goes, you know, Mr. Marzulli, I'm, I'm leaving on leave here in two weeks, and we really like to have this cleared up before I leave, as if I'm just going to hand them $150,000. Where's that going to come from? And, and I just said, well, yeah, I can appreciate that, but, you know, uh, I've got a lawyer working on it. My, my new accountant is working on it. He's got power of attorney. We have to go through the process. What was interesting is right after Obama left office and Trump was inaugurated, it all went away, except for 2013, which we knew we, we, we owed. It all went away. 14 and 15 went away. Was I targeted? I can't prove that. I can't prove that. I don't have the means to prove it. I, I, you know, I'm not rich enough to hire a team of attorneys to go in and find out, oh, target Marzulli. Why? Because almost weekly I would write an anti-Obama I call him a bummer, worst president ever, blah. And they were silencing conservative voices. There's no doubt about it. I remember Bill O'Reilly when he was still on. And by the way, you don't think that's a coup? Of course it's a coup. They got rid of O'Reilly because O'Reilly was 
the strongest conservative voice we had on television, basically one of the one of the few, other than Sean Hannity and a few others. And I remember there was a Democratic strategist on with O'Reilly, and and he pinned her to the mat in about two seconds. He said, "Name me one, name me one conservative anchor on any major news network." And she, you could see the wheels turning as she's dead silent. And he lets dead air go by, which, of course, you never do on radio or TV, for about 10 seconds. And and she has no answer. And then, he, you know, he replies and says, there you go. You can't name one. You can't name one conservative anchor on any of the major networks because they don't exist. It's a managed agenda. And this is why, this is why you can't fix it anymore because the Luciferians have got control of the, of the wheel. However, the good news is, When the king returns on the white horse, that's the game changer. That's our blessed hope. That's what we're all looking for.